In this video, we will look at mesh current method and how it can be systematically applied to solve circuits. The main steps in using the mesh current method are illustrated here. So let's see how we can apply it to this given circuit. The first step is to identify and label the mesh currents. Recall that a mesh is a loop that does not contain any other loops within it. For this given circuit, there are three meshes and these currents are labeled I1, I2 and I3. Here, clockwise direction has been assumed for all the meshes. For the application of the mesh current method, the direction, whether anti-clockwise or clockwise, does not matter. And this will be illustrated later in this video. So let's get started with step two, which is applying Kirchhoff voltage law to each mesh. Recall that Kirchhoff voltage law states that algebraic sum of voltages around a closed path is zero. We use a positive sign for voltage drop and a negative sign for voltage rise. And this is in accordance with the passive sign convention. So let's apply Kirchhoff voltage law to mesh one. There are three circuit elements in mesh one and we can start writing the equation from any circuit element. To assist with writing the Kirchhoff voltage law equation, we can assign polar voltage polarities for the resistors. So the end where the mesh current enters is assumed to be at higher potential and marked with a positive sign. And the end where the mesh current leaves is lower potential and can be marked with a negative sign. Similarly for the 8 ohm resistor, actually two mesh currents I1 and I2 are flowing through this resistor. For writing the mesh, for applying Kirchhoff voltage law to mesh 1, we give priority to the direction of mesh current I1 and therefore we assign polarity as follows. Now we can write, now we can start writing the equations. So starting with the 40 volt source, we can see that I1 is entering the terminal marked minus and leaving the terminal marked plus. So this is going from minus to plus, which is a voltage rise. Hence we write it with a minus sign as minus 40. Next is the 2 ohm resistor. We can see that the current is entering the terminal marked plus and leaving the terminal marked minus. So using passive sign convention, this is plus 2I1. Next, we apply Ohm's law and passive sign convention to the 8 ohm resistor. So we give precedence to the direction of I1 because we are writing Kirchhoff voltage law for mesh 1. Therefore, applying Ohm's law, we get plus 8 I1 minus I2 is equal to 0. So this completes the process of applying Kirchhoff voltage law to mesh 1. Let us now apply Kirchhoff voltage law to mesh 2. In mesh 2, we have three resistors and again we can start writing the mesh equations at any point in the circuit. Let's start with the 8 ohm resistor. So we follow the direction of the mesh current I2 and we can mark voltage polarities as follows. So this end is positive because I2 enters here and this end is negative. Similarly, for the 6 ohm resistor, this end is positive, this is negative, and this end is positive, and this end is negative. Now let's apply Kirchhoff voltage law. So we see that the current is entering the terminal marked positive for all three resistors. So applying passive sign convention, these will be all written with a plus sign. And we just need to apply Ohm's law to all these resistors. So the first term is plus 8 
and now there are two currents through the 8 ohm resistor but we give precedence to I2 because we're writing the equation for I2. So this is 8 times I2 minus I1. Through the 6 ohm resistor there is only I2 current. So this is plus 6 I2. Through this 6 ohm resistor we have both I2 and I3 flowing. So again we give precedence to I2 current direction and we get plus 6 I2 minus I3 and this is equal to 0. So this shows how to apply Kirchhoff voltage law to mesh 2. Finally let's apply Kirchhoff voltage law to mesh 3. Now we will give precedence to the direction of current I3. So we can mark off the polarity of the voltage drops across the resistor as shown here. Now starting we can start at any uh, circuit element but let's start here at the 20 volt source. So I3 is entering the terminal marked plus and leaving the terminal marked minus. Going from plus to minus is a voltage drop and we use plus sign for voltage drop following passive sign convention. So the first term is plus 20. Then we have the 6 ohm resistor. So plus 6 I3 minus I2. We can see that I3 and I2 are the currents flowing through the 6 ohm resistor. And these two currents are in opposite direction. So we give precedence to I3 because we are writing the KVL equation for mesh 3. And finally we have the 4 ohm resistor. So plus 4 I3 is equal to 0. This completes the process of writing the KVL equations. We can see that there are 3 equations and 3 unknowns I1, I2 and I3. So these can be easily solved to obtain the solution. We can use Wolfram Alpha to find the solution. So in the interface, in the web interface, the equations can be typed directly and Wolfram Alpha is able to recognize the equations and then we can obtain the solution as shown here. Thus solving these equations, we obtain that I1 is 28 over 5 which is 5.6 amps, I2 is 2 amps and I3 is minus 4 over 5 which is minus 0.8 amps. Once we solve the equations we can then solve for any desired circuit variables. In this case we have to find the power dissipated in the 8 ohm resistor. So power is given by I squared R and we can see that there are two currents flowing through the 8 ohm resistor. So in this case because we are taking square the direction does not matter. So we can just substitute the values. So this is I1 minus I2 squared times R and this is equal to 5.6 minus 2 squared times 8 and this gives 103.68 watt. So the final answer is by default positive because resistors always dissipate power. We can verify the solution using LTSpice. So this is the same circuit simulated in LTSpice and if I bring the cursor on top of the 8 ohm resistor we can see that the power dissipated is 103.68 watts which is exactly what we calculated. Finally let's solve the same circuit assuming different mesh current directions. So here mesh I1 is assumed to be clockwise 
And for mesh I2 and I3, we have arbitrarily assumed anti-clockwise direction. Let's see how the mesh equations uh, are written now. So let's start with mesh one. Uh, the f starting with the 40 volt source. So we're going from minus to plus. So this will be minus 40. And then the next term will be plus 2i1. For the 8 ohm resistor, again there are two mesh currents flowing through this resistor. But because of the choice of the directions, we can see that now I1 and I2 are in the same direction. Hence, this third term is plus 8 I1 plus I2 is equal to 0. Let's look at mesh 2. We start with the 8 ohm resistor and now we will give priority to mesh current I2. So this is plus 8 I2 plus I1 and then we can see that I2 and I3 are in opposite direction flowing through this 6 ohm resistor. So what we get is plus 6 I2 minus I3 and then I2 is the only current flowing through this resistor. So plus 6 I2 is equal to 0. Finally, let's look at mesh 3 starting at the 20 volt source. Now with anti-clockwise direction, I3 is flowing from, is entering the terminal marked minus and leaving the terminal marked plus. Going from minus to plus is a voltage rise and this is written with a negative sign. So we have minus 20 plus there is only I3 flowing through 4 ohm resistor. So this gives 4 I3 and then for the through the 6 ohm resistor we give precedence to I3 which is flowing in the opposite direction to I2. So we get plus 6 I3 minus I2 is equal to 0. So, we, so we can see that the direction of the mesh, the assumed direction of the mesh currents can affect the signs of some of the terms in the mesh current equations. Solving these equations, we can show that I1 is equal to 5.6 amps, I2 is now minus 2 amps, and I3 is plus 0.8 amps. Comparing this solution to the previous solution, since we assumed a different direction for the mesh current, now the signs of I2 and I3 are different. But in terms of solving for the circuit variables, such as voltage and power, there is no difference and we will get the same exact values. This concludes this detailed example illustrating the solution, uh, illustrating the application of mesh current method to solve circuits.